Let me tell you guys something. Word of mouth is the is going to be the number one way that you are going to get business in the and you're going to get business in the beauty industry. Nobody's going to go to a stylist who somebody saying, "Girl, she always cancel appointments." Oh my gosh, she has horrible customer service. Nobody's going to want to come to you because it's the little things that matter. If you do not cancel people, you're on time. That is what's going to get you bookings that's what's going to get people to come back that's what's going to get people to tell their cousins their friends their family about you about your service about your business so hello get with the program no cancellations period tip number three number three number three number three do not overbook clients don't do that i i personally let me tell you guys something when you have a business especially if you provide a service such as me you you want to pay attention to how you feel when you go get a service. See me, I come from a very um like my family. We keep ourselves up. I've been getting my hair done, my nails done, everything done since I was a little girl. So I have experience going to stylists, and you know how you you have a promise here, promise for twelve. You get there, and she has somebody in her chair. She has somebody waiting for her, and you have to wait too. That's such an inconvenience, and that's why people are in the salons front for eight hours, ten hours to get something that could take two hours, thirty minutes. You know what I'm saying? You do not want to overbook clients. Me as a stylist, I know how long everything takes me. So if a style takes me two hours, then I'll put like a thirty minute grace period in there, so like two and a half hours, and then I'll put that on my booking site. So that means that by the time the client after them gets here. They're already done. They're wrapping up. They're ready to leave. You do not want to have people sitting in here waiting to get their hair done, sitting in your salon, sitting in your studio. You do not want that. People have things to do. You want people to respect your time. You have to respect their time as well. And to me personally, as a client, not even as a stylist, not even as a business owner, as a client, I feel like if my woman is for 12 and I come for 12, I want to come there and immediately sit down. I want to immediately get started. I'm ready. I'm ready to get everything out the way so that I can move forward. Like, I feel like that is such an inconvenience. And sit there, sit there at for 12 o'clock. If you're there waiting at 12 o'clock for them, as soon as they sit down, you got your comb. You ready to get through it. You ready to start. You ready to start partying. You ready to start locking. You do lashes. You ready to start lashing. That looks good on your heart. People are going to love that. People don't like to wait, especially women. We do not like to wait. Women are very impatient. You do not want to have somebody waiting because simply having somebody wait too long is also really, really bad. That will cause them to not want to come back. Or also that could cause somebody to just leave and not want to get their service done at all because you're taking too long. Also, Going back to the good customer service, if you do have somebody waiting, because I, even though I just told you guys that I do not overbook my clients, sometimes, you know, clients want you to fix things. They come there and they want something different than what they booked. You know, little things happen like that. So when your client gets here, you need to have good customer service and explain to them, I have to do this for her. It's only going to take me 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, however long it's going to take. You let them know or like, or me. Sometimes, I, since I said I'm a stylist, if you are a stylist, you do lashes, you do nails, it doesn't matter what you do. You know how long it takes you to do something. You know how long it takes you to do a full set. You know how long it takes you to do a silk press. You know how long it takes you to do um, some volume lashes. So if if you have a client coming for one and you see, oh, I'm not going to be done until like 115, 130, now you need to text your next client and say, well, can you come for 130? Because instead of instead of having them wait in your salon, in your studio, in your suite, or wherever you work at, let them use that time to do things that they possibly could have wanted to do after they got their lashes done. Let those people know. Communicate that to them. It will get you so many gold stars, you guys. We're trying to get gold stars. We're trying to get clients. We're trying to get consistent clientele. This is how you keep it. Period. Okay, so tip number four. Number four, number four, number four. This is a big one. This is such, such, such a big one. You want to stand out from your competition. You do not want to do things like everybody else. Let me tell you guys an example. So, like I said, I've only been doing hair for one year. That is it. I wasn't the girl that grew up doing, doing people's hair in my neighborhood, doing my cousin's hair. That wasn't me. I've always paid somebody to do my hair. However, like I said, I did over... I had over 400 clients. I mean, I had over 400 booked appointments 
this year alone. I've I've created over 350 connections with people that I had never even met before starting to do hair. And the way that I did that was because I stood out. I stood out with my customer service. I stood out with not no cancellations. I stood out with not overbooking my clients. And then also the biggest one, I stood out by, I do locks, as you can see. These are some of my locks. If you are in the Louisiana area, these are called my Ivy Locks. You should definitely check them out. But with my styles, I include hair with every single style. And I am also extremely, extremely affordable. You get hair and you get an affordable price. Like, what? There are not a lot of stylists in my area that include hair in the services. That easily helped me stand out from the competition. And the reason why that let me stand out from the competition is because Say you have a girl that wants to book with me today. Instead of them having to go and worry about going get the hair, getting the right hair and all this stuff, I already have everything on deck. So all you have to do is bring yourself. All you gotta do is come and we're ready to start. That will, you know, that helps, That for me, it helps people book last minute. It helps me to get a lot of more clients last minute. Just in case I don't have my week completely booked up, that causes me to have a lot of bookings back to back to back because people are like, well, I don't have to worry about going to get hair. That's great. You know, stand, also standing off from competition does not have to be something like that, adding something extra to your services. It can also be acting and having different customer service skills than other people. Like, I'm from New Orleans, y'all. Stylists out here, they don't, they're, they're not, a lot of them are not nice. They do, they, first of all, stylists are hardly ever on time. They always overbook people. They always cancel appointments. I don't do any of that, and I feel like that's what causes me to stand out. That's what causes me to get consistent clientele, to always have people coming back to me. So you want to stand out. Number five, this is more of a beginner thing because I know that some people feel that their experience causes them to be able to charge more or do, do things differently. But this is just my opinion, especially for somebody that's just starting out. Or really just in general. But take this as you may. You need to offer great quality services for affordable prices. Now, like that's why I said this is for beginners only because I feel like if you are more advanced like me, I've been a stylist for only one year. But if you've been a stylist for five years, you may feel like you want to charge extremely high prices because... You've been in the game for five years. There is nothing wrong with that. But if you are beginning and you are just trying to get your business off of the ground, you want to be able to kind of give, you want the people to feel like they're getting more for what they're paying for, if that makes sense. So say, like, let's say you do nails and you do, like, say you did my nails and you only charge me, I don't know, like $30 for a full set with gel. They have, they have salons that charge $40, $50, $60 for that. Depending on where you live, it could be way more than that. I live in the South, so stuff is kind of cheap down here. But, you know, things can be, you know, more expensive in areas like L.A., California. But if you're giving if you're giving salon-level work for affordable prices, it's going to get people to come back. And then, you know, you can gradually, you know, increase your prices. Gradually increase, gradually increase, gradually increase. Of course, like me. I up my prices every six months because honestly, as a stylist, every six months to a year, your your skills are going to change. They're going to level up. You're going to be on a whole different level than what you were the six months previous to that. So I just recommend that you kind of affordably price. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. My one of my other ring lights just fell. <laughs> anyway, you guys, disregard that. So you you want to give great quality services. Like when I first started out, you could get a full set of 36-inch locks, you guys, 36-inch soft locks for $150 with the hair included. That is a steal. And my work, it was like, it was decent. But for what I was charging and for what I was providing, it was definitely quality for an affordable price. So, and when I say affordable, that does not mean cheap. You do not have to, you do not have to cheat yourself with your products, with your services. 
charge what you feel is necessary but also try to be more on the affordable side when you first start and you have to think of it as i'm more affordable so more people are going to come to me so in the end you aren't losing out on your end because you're gaining more future clientele more consistent clientele so do not try to cheat yourself affordable does not mean cheap it just means affordable affordable is like a median price that you can see most people paying so yes those are my five tips on how i gained over 350 clients and booked over 400 appointments in one year let me tell you guys something if i can do it you can do it this was never something that i thought i could see myself doing and here i am i found my passion i found something that wakes me up in the morning something that gets me excited something that has made me start this channel for you guys if this is your passion whatever you do if you do nails eyelashes any type of service photography anything you can implement these tips into your business and watch it go to the next level so i really hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you comment like and subscribe and come back and check your girl out for her next video because your girl is just getting started period just getting started <laughs>